Good afternoon, everybody. Is that way too loud? Yeah, it's good. Is too loud? Uh, so it's 2.20, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming to this session. It is called uh, Making Security Make Sense to uh, Your Users and Your Clients. So I do have a quick question for all of you. Uh, how many of you are actively building WordPress-powered websites for clients? Ooh, that's a good show of hands. And uh, how many of you are putting all of your clients, or most of them, on monthly recurring maintenance programs? A good portion of you. Okay, that's great. So, my intention with this talk is to provide you with useful tips for growing your business and uh, providing extra value to your clients um, in regard to security for yourself and for them. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Adam Warner. I am the open source community manager for SiteLock. It just so happens we offer security services. Uh, I'm also the co-founder of a company called Foo Plugins, which is, you can probably guess, what we make. Um, and I'm also passionate about uh, website security, and there's a very specific reason, business reason, why I am that way, and I'll share that with you in a few minutes. I'm a fan of Fractals, a proud dad, and if anybody wants to discuss the number 42, I'm happy to do that. So uh, today's focus, again, is going to be uh, to communicate the importance of security of your, to your clients, why you want to do that, how to do that, and how to have your clients um, grasp an understanding of a somewhat technical topic uh, in easy terms, and how to build security into your projects from day one. So I'm going to cover a lot of these things. And again, my goal is to make your job as a freelancer or an agency owner more streamlined and more profitable. So starting with securing your site, the benefits of securing your own site. I think all of us who build sites can agree that website security is an important subject. It's something that we should all be doing uh, as a baseline. Uh, and it all comes down to reputation. This is the first reason to secure your own site. So website attacks happen all day, every single day. And I'll talk more about the why and the how in just a few minutes. And security becomes especially important when you're the one providing the website building service. A successful attack on your site could directly impact your revenue, tarnish your reputation, and degrade your customer loyalty. So imagine this for a second. I'm on Google, and I search web development in Boston and I come across your site and I get the Chrome warning that this site may be unsafe or this site may be hacked. What is that going to do to my reputation as a web development provider? And what kind of impression am, am I gonna have as a user who's looking for a provider, right? It's not a good first impression. The answer is obvious. I'm going to leave your site immediately and move on to the next one. I don't send you a contact. You don't have the opportunity to even give me a proposal or even worse, I'm going to associate your brand forevermore with a negative thought. So they build websites, theirs is hacked. Yeah, they must be really great. So if you're not already, I urge you to invest some time in implementing even the ba most basic website security best practices uh, for your own site. Not only for your reputation, but so you can come be become familiar with those best practices so you can then educate and provide those to others. Pardon me one moment. So, with that, I never recommend anything to my clients that I haven't used myself. Or, a better way to put it is, I would never do that again. I've failed clients before because of not doing proper due diligence on the plugins, the themes, or the services that I'm recommending to clients, right? I've learned my lesson. So, when I talk about becoming familiar, familiar with security best pra practices and products and services, I'm talking about eating our own dog food before we start offering or suggesting those services to other people. And finally, securing your own site protects your business, as I've mentioned. Um, and I have that very specific story for you. About 11 years ago, 10, 11 years ago now, I was working full-time, but I created a uh, site called Indie Lab, 
and it was a WordPress multi-site installation. And if you're not familiar with multi-site, it's basically uh, a WordPress installation where you can have sub-sites underneath it, individual uh, sub-sites, like WordPress, WordPress.com. You can go there and sign up for a free website. Um, that is on a, a version of WordPress multi-site. So this site was for creatives. It was for musicians, uh, photographers, artists of all kinds to come and get their free site, their free blog. And um, then I monetized that site with offering specific features for X amount of dollars per month. It was going really well, and it continued to go really well, and so well, in fact, that I was probably a few weeks away, maybe a month away from quitting my full-time job and going full force into this one until, and you can probably see where this is going, uh, I woke up one morning and had an inbox full of emails from my uh, customers, uh, free and paid, wondering why their site was showing um, adult stuff. <clears throat> I didn't know why. Um, I assumed why, so I started digging in. Um, at the time that this happened, uh, there, was a, there were separate forums for WordPress multi-site called WPMU, and there were no security companies that could just come in and clean up a hacked WordPress install. At least I didn't know of any. So I got on the forums, got some advice, was told what to do in very uh, specific steps, did those, everything was great. Two days later, everything was cleaned up. Emailed back all of those people who had emailed me, everything was good to go, don't worry about it, it's a temporary thing, things happen. Two days later, same thing. And then I continued on for weeks, literally weeks, trying to figure out where that back door was that I had missed. I couldn't figure it out, so working full time, managing other things, I called it quits. I refunded everybody their money and I closed the business. And then I got really depressed, right, because I failed. But, silver lining, I then became very aware, acutely aware of website security and the importance of it to protecting my business that I was trying to build. I wasn't doing really freelance or agency work, but it was an online business that needed to be protected just like every single website on the internet. So now let's talk about the benefits of securing your client sites. You've got your own site secured, awesome. Now what about those client sites? Are you now actively implementing basic website security steps? Are, has anybody, when you build a client site, are you including security steps in there, whatever they may be? Awesome, kudos. So let's talk about why securing your client sites is important to your media and your long-term business. One, it's in your best interest. Pretty obvious, right? Have, has anybody ever received a frantic phone call or email uh, at midnight on a Saturday from a client? saying uh, something's wrong with my site, it's showing Viagra ads. Um, I think we've all probably experienced some version of that, right? The inopportune support request. So I feel that it's our responsibility as the technical contact, the one who built the site, the one who knows how the internet works, to fix whatever problem they're experiencing, right? So that means we get up in the middle of the night and we start digging in, we start troubleshooting. Now that's not sustainable, especially if you have a, a spouse or kids or want to lead any kind of normal schedule. <clears throat> so securing your client sites before the handoff with whatever steps you take can save you time, money, and headaches. And even if it's out of the project scope as providers, it's our responsibility to, at the very least, educate our clients or potential clients and urge them to take the basic steps in security. So another pretty obvious one, it gives us all peace of mind. So it gives you peace of mind knowing that you can sleep through the night on a weekend, and it gives your clients a peace of mind knowing that their site is going to be secure, and if the worst happens, there's a plan. So I mentioned educating clients. Let's talk about that for a second. This is the hard part. Educating your clients and potential clients, it isn't just the right thing to do for your business. It's the right thing to do, period, in my opinion. It's all about spreading awareness, right? And making the internet a safer place. 
When I said it was the right thing to do, I'm speaking from a global human race perspective, right? The internet is such an incredible tool that we have the, uh, the luxury of living with, connecting with others and building businesses, but just like walking through a dark city at night, it's critical that we all become more aware of our surroundings and the potential threats that lurk in the shadows, right? So our responsibility, of, again, as the ones who know how the internet works and know what the risks are, or are gonna learn those at a work camp or a WordPress meetup or on our own, um, to spread that awareness as much as possible. So who's responsible for security? How many of you think it's you only? No one, good. How many of you think it's the client? Okay, no one. Uh, how many of you think it's the web host? Okay, a few of you. Well, the short answer is you're all right. Um, it's all three to varying degrees. You're responsible, the client is responsible, and the web host is responsible. So you can think of website security and who's responsible by thinking of it as an apartment complex. Your website host is the, is the infrastructure of the website uh, complex. They are responsible for making sure that the parking lot lights are on, that the gate is working and uh, not broken, that the security guard is at his post, uh, that the sidewalks are shoveled in the winter, that sort of thing. The buildings of that apartment complex are what we as website builders, freelancers, and agency owners build for our clients. We're making sure that those sites adhere to all the building codes. We make sure that they have SSL. We make sure that it's a good, uh, a good user interface. We make sure that the navigation has good structure for SEO. We make sure that the content is structured as it should be. The individual website owner, on the other hand, is the person that owns an apartment in that building within that complex. And it's that person's responsibility as the website owner to make sure that their doors are locked when they leave, their windows are locked when they leave. So the short answer again is all three. We're all responsible for the security of a website. And your clients need to understand that as well. So if you're educating your clients from the first phone call or email, as I suggest, you're already starting to set yourself apart, which then can increase your value. So you can expand that into educating what website security is as it pertains to the business goals of your clients, and you can quickly position yourself as the expert and become a partner, again, in that business and more valuable to your client. Security, education, and awareness does start and I urge this, I urge you to do this from the very first contact, whether you get a contact via a, a form on your site or a phone call, your very first reply should include something about securing the website, whatever that is. So ensuring that even if you don't move forward with a proposal, they know that security is important to you, so if they have a bad experience somewhere else, or if they do get hacked sometime in the future, that they will keep you in mind. Uh, next is additional revenue. So the last benefit of educating your clients is that it presents these additional revenue opportunities, higher prices or residual income. You can demand higher prices because you've already started to position yourself as the go-to and recommended resource, the one who cares about the business growth of your clients and the security of their, of their site. And the key here is to provide immense value that no one else in your, uh, in your competition space is providing. And then to communicate that value proposition to that potential client um, in order to make an impact. And when I talk about residual income, that's where monthly maintenance programs come in and even add-on services uh, in regard to security. So a monthly maintenance uh, plan, uh, an example would be uh, daily security scans. And then at the end of the month, you report what has been found, what hasn't been found, how many scans were done, uh, that sort of thing. If you're talking about uh, residual income from add-on services, that could be a one-time malware clean. If they come to you with a hacked site, you can clean that site up or get a service to do that for you. There's many out there. Uh, well, there's a few out there that are really 
uh, something I would recommend. Um, so you can do the one-time clean. You can even set up services, um, which I'll get to in a little bit. You could offer, uh, you could make residual income from affiliate commissions. So if you don't want to handle any management of any security service dashboard for your clients, you can simply refer people and make a commission on that. So the benefits of communicating the need for security effectively. The, this is the nuts and bolts of this talk and what I really want to communicate to you all today because if you take nothing away from this, please take this part away and use it in your own businesses to communicate to your clients. So in my experience, most clients have an averse reaction to any mention of security. Their eyes glaze over, they recoil in disgust because they think it's too technical or they think it's too expensive or they think it's not needed for Mama Joe's cat blog, which is not true. So how do you explain the subject of website security into terms that your clients will easily digest and understand? And that's where you can use that apartment complex analogy. Or you can communicate these three things, um, or both. So if you break website security down into its most basic questions, then it's much easier to understand. It makes it simpler to communicate the importance to business owners and the concepts that are more familiar to them. So the first of these three things is why. Why websites get hacked. Hackers don't discriminate between the types of websites they attack. Even if it's just a, a simple five-page catalog, it's still an attractive target. And why is that? It's because if your site is compromised, it can be used as the open door for the attacker to spread their malware across other sites on that same network, and then, of course, spreading it to the internet as a whole. So the first hacking tactic that may come to mind is known as defacement. Um, we had a presidential election here in 2016, and there was one candidate um, whose, uh, whose uh, campaign site was hacked. And it was a defacement hack. And there was a big banner with that person's slogan in it. And you could put a query string in the top of that site and you could change that banner, that slogan, to say whatever you wanted to. And if you look at presidential election campaign hack examples, you'll find quite a few of them. Some tame, some not so tame. But that's, defacements are not the, the most popular hack that happens. Um, what usually happens is why websites get hacked is because it's for some sort of financial gain. So hacks can be as serious as Equifax. Anybody remember that one? 143 million Americans and people from other countries, all of their data taken. And do you know why that happened uh, as an aside? Because the server, the software on the server that that site was hosted on was out of date. They know it for four months and they didn't update the software. So it was vulnerable. So financial gain, that's one, uh, that's one uh, example of financial gain. The other is that uh, a hacker could run a script on your site that redirects all your visitors to some other paid site that includes their affiliate ID. So imagine I release a script into the wild and I get to Rich's site and I redirect, his visitors redirect and then I get 10 more visits from my affiliate ID and then from there I get 1,000 and then from there I get 500,000 and someone makes a purchase and I make easy money. Or they don't even have to make a purchase, they just get paid per click. So really financial gain is, is the real reason. And when you tell that to a client who doesn't know about website hacks or scripts or how they happen, um, it usually starts to, starts to turn on the light bulb. And the second thing to communicate is the who and the how of hacking. So when we think of hackers, the stereotype is that it's some angsty, antisocial teen in the basement who's mad at his parents and has a hoodie on and he just wants to do it uh, to, to get back at someone. But um, although there probably are those types of hackers out there, the overwhelming majority of website attacks and successful hacks are performed by automated bots or scripts. So in other words, the term malware comes from the words 
malicious and software, so malware. It's scripts that are designed to go out and find vulnerabilities. Website compromises can happen in many ways, so to keep it simple, it all comes down, again, to those vulnerabilities in various access points. Access points can include outdated software, weak passwords, or newly discovered vulnerabilities in already up-to-date software that hasn't been patched yet. So when do website attacks happen? Again, all day, every day. There's an average of 44 attacks per day, or 16,000 attacks on the average website per year, according to a, re a security report that we recently did. And this was supposed to, oh, there it is, it's animated. So this is an example from North Security, uh, a real-time um, representation of hacks that are happening. You can see, all day, every day. So, the benefits of implementing those five simple website security best practices that I mentioned. So after you've communicated the why, the who, the how, and the when, it's time to start building security in your project proposals and your costs and continue to educate your clients, or both, really. So at the core of a 360-degree website security plan are these five things. And they're not hard to implement. And many of you, maybe all of you, are already doing all these things. One are taking regular backups. Um, regular backups means your files, your database, weekly, monthly, and storing those backups off-site in more than one place. Ideally two, ideally three, depending on how important your, your site and your data is. And make sure you have clean versions of those backups. You can test those backups on staging sites. Number two, updates. Keeping the software up to date is critical. This includes WordPress core software, it includes the plugins you use, it includes the themes, and if you're anything like me, I have a little bit of shiny object syndrome where I have installed everything under the sun in terms of applications from my web hosting provider if they made them available, and then I let them sit on my server and never use them. All those files, all that code is sitting there ready to be exploited. So if you have anything on your web hosting account, on your server that you're not using, get rid of it. And that comes, uh, that applies to plugins and themes too. Um, I recommend at least a month kind of doing an audit of the plugins that you're using and that you're not using and deactivate anything you're not using and delete anything that you're not using. Number three. Strong passwords and unique passwords. Um, if anybody has their laptop open, I, I welcome you to go to haveibeenpwned.com forward slash passwords. So I know passwords are not easy to come up with, especially strong and unique ones, and um, they're not at all easy to remember multiple strong uh, and unique passwords. Um, but this really goes for any single account you have online, and even offline. Your uh, local Wi-Fi in your house, your local machine, strong and unique password, any single login you have online should have a different and unique password uh, from anything else. And now we say, well, how do we keep track of all those things? Password managers. Uh, one password, last pass, key pass, dash lane, there's a bunch out there. So, did anybody put their password into Have I Been Pwned? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, well, this is what happened when I put mine in. Uh, I put my password in that I used to reuse, and it says that this password's been seen two times before previously appeared in the data breach. So, that's, that's an example of why it's important to have unique and strong passwords for every single login. I could have just as well kept using the same password for all my sites, but now it's out there for the world to see. Okay, back to those five simple security uh, best practices. Number four, firewalls and CDNs. Um, if you're not familiar with, a, with what a firewall is, there's two versions of a firewall, or two explanations of a firewall. There are network firewalls, which is typically what your host employs, to keep their network of computers safe from each other. 
and also from the outside world. And then there are web application firewalls. And basically a web application firewall, there are several out there to choose from. It puts a layer of physical and virtual security in between the traffic that's headed to your web server and your actual web server over here. It needs to go through the web application firewall first. And what a web application firewall, or WAF, does, that's hard to say three times fast, web application firewall, um, it blocks automated bot traffic um, immediately before it gets to your web server. So it's a, it's a really good layer of protection right off the bat. And all you have to do is set it up once and you're good to go. Number five best practice is continuous monitoring of your site or your client's sites. And when we talk about continuous monitoring, um, if your site is hacked and you're not aware of it for X number of days or weeks, uh, Google could detect that it is hacked and then blacklist you from their search engine. Um, it happens all the time. They want to protect their product. Uh, so the sooner you know that something's wrong with your site or your client's site, uh, the sooner you can get it corrected to keep other bad things from happening to that business that you're partnering with or to your own. Let's talk about the benefits of including security in the project scope. Just like discussing security from that first client contact, including that conversation and the importance of security through the project scope with individual line items um, can benefit your reputation and that of your business. It can provide a professional, a more professional image, including that focus, uh, or even requiring security to be built into all of your products can go a long way in building that reputation, that professional image, and also trust. It can build trust in your company and your brand. If they know you're not committed to just doing one job, passing it on, and moving on to the next, but again, that partnering, that growth of their own business, you're going to be considered a trusted partner, and you'll have the opportunity to earn more money by doing this. Which brings me to the next section, including security as a service. We talked briefly about this. Focusing on that first contact and the talk of security in your project scope all the way through the proposal sets you up to demand that higher price for the initial project. It also sets you up for those ongoing maintenance plans and it makes those conversations easier. We've already answered this question. How many of you are doing maintenance plan? It looked like the majority of you. Some of you are including security as part of that plan. I urge you to include at least the five best practices before you hand over a site. Um, and if you're not, you can easily roll security under the umbrella of backups and updates or call out, again, those specific levels of security that you'll be including. Add-on services, again, can include the one-time malware cleanup. If they come to you with a hack, you can get that done for them. One-time monitoring or scanning. You can do a risk assessment score uh, through a scan. You can do a site checkup through a scan. Again, there's a, there's a few different options, so I'm not gonna name one over the other. Just search WordPress uh, security scan and you'll find what you need. Uh, or you can do the setup of a web application firewall. Let's say they go out to any firewall provider and secure the account and then they say, well, I'm not quite sure how to change DNS. I don't know what that means to route my traffic through here. You can offer that as part of your setup too, or an option in your project proposal. So the benefits of automating maintenance and reporting, um, it looks like most of you probably, if you're already offering monthly maintenance programs, you probably have some kind of streamlined system. So you're probably already familiar with Manage WP. Anybody use Manage WP or something similar, Infinite WP, others? So if you don't know what Manage WP is, I highly recommend this service or others like it. It basically allows you as a freelancer agency owner to uh, manage individual WordPress installs all from one uh, unified dashboard. And that means running software, core WordPress software updates across 10, 50, 100, 1,000 sites at the same time. Uh, Plugin updates, theme updates, uh, backups, all kinds of stuff. Highly recommend that service. There's another one that's uh, kind of new, and I actually learned about this at a Joomla conference. Uh, it's called Watchful, and they uh, do the similar thing to what Manage WP does. 
um, but they do it for WordPress and Joomla, and I believe the last I checked on them, they were working on the Drupal uh, version too. So, because I'm a lover of open source, um, I'm cross-platform. Finally, let's talk about the benefits of a summary of a presentation. Uh, so, my advice and my hope is that you'll remember these things to grow your business. Secure your own site first for your reputation management, to build trust, give yourself peace of mind, learn the why, or remember the why, how, who, and when of website security, how websites get hacked, who's hacking, uh, and why they're hacking. Communicate those business benefits effectively, and I'm talking about the business benefits to your clients, to their business, about why they should know about security. Let me talk to you about website security. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk your ear off. It's only going to take five minutes, but did you know? And the benefits of, of that will lead you to including them in your project scope, um, offering uh, higher price or demanding higher prices or offering additional services. And then if you're not automating your maintenance and reporting to your clients, um, I strongly suggest that you do that. And that's what I have for you. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. We have about 10 minutes left before the break. So uh, if you do have a question, yes, sir. What kind of backup software do you recommend? The question was, what kind of backup software do I recommend? I've used uh, a plethora of backup options in the WordPress world. There is Backup Buddy, which is a very long standing and mature product. If you search the uh, plugins repository, so in admin plugins, add new search, if you search for backup, there's Updraft Plus is a good one. Another one is called Back WP Up. Uh, and any other popular ones that anybody wants to throw out there? No? But those would be mine. Yeah, those three. Uh, I've used those successfully. And, and Backup Buddy is premium only. It's a paid product. And then the other two are free in the repository, but they have paid versions depending on what you want to do with them. Okay. Any other uh, questions? Yes, sir. So with your site, uh, blacklist, uh, Google blacklist your site, then it's another one, Norton blacklist your site. Is the Norton one just as important as the Google one blacklisting? So the question is, is if Google blacklists your site or Norton blacklists your site, which one is more important? So my answer to that is, and I think there may be um, either confusion on my part, uh, but Norton is uh, a security software that's for your local machine. So Google is a search engine, Bing is a search engine, Yahoo sort of is a search engine. Uh, but, so they are two different things, right? Because I don't think that Norton can really blacklist a site um, on the internet. People will still find it, but on your local machine, uh, if it's detected as having malicious software, um, it, will, it will probably blacklist your site, right? So it, it's, they're probably just as important, because if your people visiting your site are using Norton, then your site's going, going to be blocked. Oh, Norton Site Check, I'm not familiar with. Is that, a, is that a service? Or is that something that's... Okay, I'll Google it. I see it through Manage WP a lot. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to look at that. Norton Site Check. Good question. We'll all learn something new. Safeweb.norton.com Okay. I wasn't aware they were offering uh, website scans now, it sounds like, or site checks. They're probably, yeah, so it would make sense, right? Because they're protecting your local machines and those of their users, so if they detect that a site has malware on it, which could be uh, uh, downloading software in the background when someone visits the site, like a key logger or something to your local machine. Good question, and thank you for the further information. Yes, sir? So you're, um, you're doing
something gets past those spirit benefits to no fault of their own, but just because something you said in their wild that allows the site to be hacked. You now have responsibility to fix the hacked site because you've got the maintenance program? Good question. So his question was if I put all those security measures, best practices in place, and I've passed it on, and everything's been updated, and I'm doing my job with the monthly maintenance program, and the site still gets hacked, what do you do as the provider, right? What kind of guarantee? Is that the question? Yes. Um, that's a good question. And I think that comes down to the uh, individual nature of your business. Um, but in the world of the internet, in the world of walking down the street, security, unfortunately, isn't something that's 100% attainable all the time. And my advice would be to also communicate that to your clients. It's, a, it's really about, imagine this is your attack radius. These are all the ways in which someone could come at you to attack you. And putting basic security measures in place reduces that attack radius or cuts up that pie. So it reduces your chance of something bad happening. Just like walking down the street and I put my wallet in my front pocket with my hand on it when I'm walking through you know, a downtown or a shady area, um, that reduces the chance that a pickpocket will come and pull my wallet out of my pocket. Um, that would be my best advice. Is It really would come down to how you want to approach that, but I would communicate at least that part to your clients and then maybe maybe have a guarantee. You know, if it's, if it's, if you find that um, it's a cost benefit and it's a value add. Maybe you say, if your site is hacked, we will fix it for free. And then you eat the cost to get a one-time malware cleanup. Good question. Thank you. Yes, sir. Are there, are there any monitoring tools that you can use to see what's, what's hitting your site? Yeah, the question was, are there any monitoring tools that you can use to, to see what's happening with your site? There are a bunch of them. Um, I work for a company that offers one, but I'm not here to talk about that. So um, I would search uh, WordPress Site Scanner, uh, and you will come across several options uh, in Google. And the Site Scanners, what they do, some of them look at your site from the outside in as a browser would see it, or as a user would see your site. And some of them you connect to your actual web server so they can scan the actual files on your server looking for malware that may be nested or hidden in there and then can remove that. So when you're looking for site scanners, WordPress, I would look for um, deep scan or inside out scan or just scanners in general. Yes, ma'am. Do you know anything about Word, WordFence? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the question is, do I know anything about WordFence? I do. Um, WordFence is a great product. And uh, just like us, they're doing great things in the security space. Um, and uh, I use WordFence on several sites. Uh, so WordFence provides a lot of immediate reporting right to you within your WP admin dashboard, which is great. Uh, so knowing what I know as a user, and I know several of the people within the company, all quality in my opinion. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, the question is, my hosting provider provides me with a site log service. Um, and, and that happens because we do have a lot of partnerships with a lot of uh, global web hosts. Um, and the question was, is that different? Is there different levels of service? There certainly is. So you could have what you call a light scan, which just does the outside scan on your site, which uh, looks for things like um, SQL injections and cross-site scripting. Um, or redirects, things like that, or you could have um, a higher level which includes that deep scan, or you could have an enterprise site instead of us scanning 10 pages on your site, we're, we're scanning 500,000 pages, and you could, do, you could do a monthly scan, you could do a daily scan, you could do what they call the infinity scan, which is it gets done and then it just scans again. So yeah, the answer is yes, there's different levels. And depending on the host and the partnership, it, it depends on what they what they offer their customers. Any other questions? All right, well, thanks again for everybody for coming. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the workshop.